everybody and welcome to night number 26 of History Bedtime Stories. In bed, in our pajamas, tonight we're talking about ribbon farms. This uniquely French idea to put everyone on an even playing field when it came to farming in the New World. Now you'll find ribbon farms uh, all along the Great Lakes, the St. Lawrence Seaway, southern Louisiana, and of course Detroit. Anywhere founded by the French for European settlers. And in 1701, on July 24th, Antoinette de la Mose, Sir de Cadillac, lands on what will become Fort Pontchartrain du Détroit, or Fort Pontchartrain on the Strait. Détroit, being French for Strait, becomes the name of the city anglicized to Detroit but it's really just a reference to that river. And that river has everything to do with Detroit's ribbon farms. As Cadillac is given the authority to offer out land grants to settlers, each settler gets a little tiny purchase on the river and then two or three mile strip of land running north. This served a couple of purposes. First, it gives every settler access to the water for both transport and irrigation. Second, it allows all of the houses to be grouped, um, everyone on their own property, but all in the same area so that you didn't have to spend so much time traveling from home to home to trade, visit, and have commerce with each other. It also made it easier to defend the homes because they were grouped up. A uh, few other great things about it is you got variations in soil and crops you could plant because over a three mile long strip, you got a lot more different types of soil, soil types of irrigation, and types of natural animals existing on that land than you would over, let's say, a 200 yard by 200 yard square piece of property all in the same area. It also made it quicker and easier to till the ground with oxen because you could run long, long strips and only have to turn a couple of times. As this land is given out, it really sets up the earliest maps of Detroit. This map from 1810 is in the collection of the Detroit Historical uh, Society at the Detroit Historical Museum, and it shows the private claims of land in the Michigan Territory along the Detroit River. What you'll notice as we go from this map of 1810 to the second map from 1863, done by the great Silas Farmer and Company, also courtesy of the Detroit Historical Society, a lot of those farms start becoming street names. And to this day, not only in location, but oftentimes in names, the original ribbon farms of Detroit have become our streets. Maxwell, Cyburn, Van Dyke, Mount Elliot, Joseph Campo, and Bobian, among many, many, many of our earliest ribbon farms, today streets we drive on every day. I hope you're enjoying history bedtime stories as much as we're enjoying bringing them to you. If you'll like and share this video, as well as tagging a friend down in the comment section below, we'll enter you into a random drawing to win a City of Detroit flag button. You can show it off between, you know, the kitchen, the living room, and the couch. All the fabulous places we all get to visit nowadays. Wash your hands, stay safe, and we'll see you tomorrow.